Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome into our uh, study room where we are looking at the names of God. Lord, I want to know you written by Kay Arthur. Uh, today we are going to be looking at the 16th day, I do believe. And we're going to be learning a new name of God. Now people uh, need not get confused. We are not calling God a different person, but he has different aspects of his nature, which are signified by names that show him to be who he is, identify him. And as we learn the, those names, we understand more deeply what's written in our Bibles and why, excuse me, why certain things are, are so. For example, when we say the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it and are safe. And uh, some boast in chariots and some trust in horses, but we will rely on the name of the Lord our God. Uh, God's name is a good name, and it has he has revealed himself throughout history to mankind by these names, culminating in King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But we also learned since the beginning of this study that God is one, and uh, one God forever and ever. And I have a sneeze. <laughs> excuse me <laughs> my morning sneeze <laughs> anyway so uh, uh what day is 16 in your book what day what what page is it on yes i'm sorry i said that wrong um hold on um 59 okay so that's where if you're following the new edition um, that's the page you'll be on in my book in the old edition it's page 66 so let's go to prayer first because without God's help and the Holy Spirit we can't possibly understand what he's trying to teach us today because I'm just a little person and uh, that God inspired to do this not that I have anything more than anyone else if you have the Holy Spirit residing in you you have the you have God's very own self as your teacher so let's go to prayer. Oh, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thine incredible power. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Here we are still in a time of lockdown in Ontario, Canada, and uh, we don't see the purpose of it. We understand that a lot of confusion and misinformation and disinformation is spread about life and death but we have already learned Lord God that you are the one who gives our breath and then when you remove it we are gone just like the little birds and the animals and that we don't need to worry about today or tomorrow because you hold our very heartbeats in your hand and nothing escapes your notice you made us, you, you gave us each a uh, number of days to live. So teach us to number them aright that we may pre present to you a heart of wisdom. And as we learn your this new um, name of yours, this that, ex that reveals to us your character and nature in the operations of things in our world and in our lives personally i pray that lord you would uh, cause us to desire to worship you by that name and give you praise and honor and glory for your name is high and lifted up and we are just little little beings here on this earth we know that even so though you created each of us with a purpose that only we can fulfill and so help us to find that purpose and to bring you glory in our lives and in this study, Lord. So open our eyes, open our ears, help us our, to understand what it is you would have to know, understand, and how to be and um, how to live in this day. Amen. Okay, kiddo, here we are. We are in the 16th day. Uh, and... Uh, we have studied, okay, let's see if you can go. I'm not going to give you any clues. I want you to name as many of God's names as you remember um, and what they mean. 
<laughs> I put you right on the spot, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> that's what a teacher does, don't you know? <laughs> oh, that's not what the teacher does. <laughs> <laughs> dig, dig deep. Um, they don't have to be in order. Just, just. Uh, Elohim. Yes. Is the creator. Yes. Elohim. Uh oh. Mighty God. I am mighty God. Um, Elroy, the God who sees. Um, El Shaddai, which is breasted. Adonai. That makes no sense to me, so. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm I'm indicating a slave. Oh yeah, Lord and Master. I knew it was in there, my brain didn't compute. <laughs> um and uh Jehovah, which is the self existent one. Good job. Very good. Hey, good retrieval. How many coffees have you had? <laughs> Code asked. <laughs> I just made one. <laughs> okay, so uh, Jehovah is what we were looking at last time. And um, when he spoke that name to Moses, when Moses asked God, imagine speaking face to face like Moses did. Oh, yeah. Who shall I say sent me when he was referring to uh, to uh, God telling the people of Israel that he was about to take them out of uh, slavery in Egypt? And what did God say to Moses sent him? Tell them it is I am who sent you. I am. I am who I am. So good. All right, so in the 16th day, it starts with a prayer. Oh, Jehovah, our self-existent one, you who possess essential life, who am I that you are mindful of me? If you are the all-sufficient one, why do you need me? Why do you want me? And what have I to offer you? I'm keep being reading. Uh, he needs and wants you because he is more than Jehovah. He is Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tsekenu, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Ra'a, Jehovah Makadishkam, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sabaot, Jehovah Shama. What do all these names mean? And, and we see that they are hyphenated. So Jehovah hyphenated with the uh, extra ad thing at the end. So what do all these names mean? We will mine the spiritual treasures of these names in the days to come. Each one of them compounded with Jehovah shows us that the very essence of his being is to love, to give, to be more than self-contained. As the self-existent one, he desires to meet the needs of those he created in his own image. That's something to think about. Thus he becomes Jehovah, our provider, Jehovah, our shepherd, Jehovah that sanctifies us, and so on. To be beyond himself is part of his character. And as you and I take on his character more and more, we then can reach out beyond ourselves to manifest to others what he is to us. So the first name, that compounded name that we were looking at um is which one jehovah jireh jehovah jireh my provided his grace is sufficient for me for me for me jehovah jireh my provided his 
His grace is sufficient for me. My God shall provide all my needs according to his riches in glory. He will give his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. So that's another song that goes with uh, that name. Okay, so when we were uh, studying this passage, we were asked to uh, do some marking, some specific marking. So I'm just going to read out what it was. We're looking at Genesis, for those who haven't got the book, we're looking at Genesis 22, verses 1 to 19. And whatever version of the Bible that you're in, uh, you have to make uh, allowances for how the language adjusts in your particular version. Um, I've used many versions. I'm stuck on the uh, New American Standard Bible right now and have been there for about 30 years. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that we were supposed to underline was the Lord will provide, in quotations. So that is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. And then we were going to mark the words love, obey, and worship in some way. Now, I always mark love with a heart. Um, obey, it's up to you. Um, because this is a workbook that you're do you're using, you can mark it however you like, just so that they're different. And the reason for that is so that when you go back and look at the text, the your different markings pop out at you, and you can see where the reference is. Okay, all right. And uh, there's something in here that I wanted to make note of for Bible students. Um, I'm going to write, read, just read what it says. Okay, in this chapter, Genesis 22, verses 1 to 19, um, there is the first mention of these three words in the entire Bible. So God has written 21 chapters, and until now, the words love, obey, and worship have not been used. When a significant word is mentioned for the first time in the word of God, the principles connected with that word hold true throughout the rest of scripture. This is called the principle of first mention. Um, and and I, I think they're saying this in this study because there is a, there's a kind of a false belief in culture that God contradicts himself that the Bible contradicts itself. And I'm here to assert that it's not the Bible or God that contradicts himself. It's that God has a great big imagination and we have a little pea brain and we haven't studied enough. We haven't learned enough like children, you know, I mean, we quickly learn from our parents that touching a hot stove is bad. It's hot. I remember having to teach that to my little one, hot, hot. <sighs> and indicating pain so that whenever I said hot, she knew not to touch. But here we're talking about the first mention of something. So when, when it's mentioned the first time, the principle of the way that word and that concept is used is consistent throughout scripture. And that's what it's about. So Adrian, you're going to read for us Genesis 22 verses 1 to 19. Now it came about after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And he said, take now your son, your only son, whom you love. You whom you love. Yeah. Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And he split wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, God raised, third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey and I and the lad will go yonder and we will, there's worship, I missed that worship. one. I missed it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to return to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took his hand, the fire, and the knife. So the two of them walked together, on together. 
And Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. He said, behold the fire and the wood, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them were. Okay, so we were supposed to under, underline God will provide for him. I did that. Okay. <laughs> so the two of them walked on together. Then they came to the place of which God had told them. And Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood and bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. And he said, do not stretch out your hand against the lad and do nothing to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham raised his eyes and looked and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went into the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place the Lord will provide. Underline. As is, it, it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it will be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Indeed, I will greatly bless you and I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore and your she seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. And in the seat, in your seat, all nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed me. Obeyed. Yep. So Abraham returned to his young men. They arose and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham lived at Beersheba. Thanks. So now the question is here, in the light of what you saw regarding Jehovah Jireh and the words love, obey, and worship, Write out what you have learned. So uh, in the, in the, the text asks us to write out the events and circumstances surrounding the use of each word and any other significant insights and into the usage of the word or its timing in history. So where do we see the first mention of love? What's the relationship that we see? A man who loves his son enough to take the chance of sacrificing him. Yes. Yeah, so, so it, it's not just, okay. So we have to kind of put into context here. Um, this father son relationship is of the son who was born because of God's promise. So Isaac, the son, is the son that God promised to Abraham in his very old age, when his wife was really old. I mean, for childbearing, not, you know, not for living, but for childbearing. And so this is the love relationship between a very special son and his father. Uh, what do we see um, in terms of... Um, Okay, so we see something else about love in here. What? 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 Um, he also showed God that he loved him enough to sacrifice his son for him. Yes, he 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 believed God and loved him enough to trust him. And so when Isaac is uh, on the pile of wood and his father is about to slay him to make an af a burnt offering. Um, what has God provided? A ram, a yes. sacrifice for him. Yes. Okay, so, so in this case, we see that love involves... sacrifice exactly 
and the willingness to and the willingness to offer that which is most precious exactly to us like i i i don't know i don't think i'd want to i'm 60 almost 65 now and i don't think i'd want to have children <laughs> in my life right now you know i mean as as my own to raise because it's exhausting you have to have a lot of energy in that and there was uh abraham in his 90s he has this little kid, right? Who is a young man by the time he's taking him up the mountain, likely. Okay. So what do we learn about, about uh, the word obey? Um, it goes along with the same thing with love. He was obedient and willing, being willing to sacrifice his son. Yes. So, so... God told Abraham to do something. Did Abraham say, I don't think so? No, he just said, yes, Lord. Yes. And he took his little boy up there, however his boy was, however old he was. And the boy uh, question, where's the, where's the sacrifice? And what does the Lord, what does uh, Abraham say about the sacrifice? We underlined it. God provided it. Yes, God. With, before God did provide it, uh, Abraham said, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Uh, do you think that Abraham was naive? When he went up no. the mountain and he believed God and he did it. No, he didn't think. No, he wasn't naive. He knew the Lord would provide. And so um, this obedience, what does it have to do with love? God loves us even when we are disobedient, but he doesn't like it. And how do we show our love for God? How did Abraham show? By being obedient. Exactly. Exactly. And um, <clears throat> those who are parents of children know that there are certain things that we just want them to obey, uh, mostly because it's for their own good that they learn to obey. And um, sometimes they they want to and sometimes they don't um and as a parent when they disobey it makes us feel very unloved unrespected a and i'm just saying that on an earthly level right um when we're children of parents we don't think about our disobedience as unloving we just are thinking about our own way and True. in this and <clears throat> And, and that's immaturity. <clears throat> but um, Abraham did as he was told by God. And so obedience is an acknowledgement um, that God owns us and has every right to ask this kind of thing of us. But in that obedience, we are shown something about the character of God in that, did he make Abraham kill his son? No. Of course not. That wouldn't have honored God at all, right? But, okay, so there's something that, that God said to Abraham. Um after okay in the mount of the lord it will be provided then the angel of the lord called to abraham a second time from heaven and said can you continue reading there be by myself i have sworn declares the lord because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son your only son Indeed, I will greatly bless you, and I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore. 
and your seed shall possess the gates of their enemies. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have, you have obeyed my voice. That's something, eh? All the nations of the earth are blessed because of Abraham's obedience to God, because he did not withhold his son. And do you suppose Abraham understood what was going on at the time? <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe. Well, he, he knew enough to obey. But you see, there was a condition for that blessing, and he passed the test. The test of blessing for Abraham was his obedience. He had a choice. He didn't have to obey God. It's the same with us. We don't have, we have a choice yeah. to obey or disobey. But there's a word here. He blessed all, not only just Abraham, but all as, and in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So <clears throat> that's a pretty important issue. Like, Abraham's one point, one man in time, but when, when you, and, and in the time that he was living, right, it might not have made any sense. It wouldn't have made any sense to me to take your son up to be sacrificed to the Lord. Yeah. Um, but I think that in uh, the culture around him, maybe that people were doing child sacrifice. Maybe they were, you know. There were all kinds of different false gods and idols that people had these ideas that they had to kill their children for, to sacrifice them to false idols. Uh, I believe that's still happening today, but I'm not going to talk about it because that's not what we're talking about today. <clears throat> but because of that, throughout history, just expanded exponentially the blessing from Abraham. And you and I, Adrienne, and likely everyone who's listening to this um, study has been blessed because of the blessing of Abraham. Okay. What is the next word that we were looking at? It was worship. Yes. Okay. So what is Abraham where you marked it? Find where you marked it in your text and read the sentences uh -huh. around it. Um, and Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder, and we will worship and return to you. Mm -hmm. So that's the first mention of worship in the whole of the Bible. Genesis 22. Um, <clears throat> do you think that people weren't worshiping God up to then? I don't think as many as could be probably were. Mm. So in the timeline of events, historical events, uh, Noah came before Abraham. And, and even after the flood, I don't think everybody chose. After a while, I don't think everybody was worshiping the Lord. I think once they ended, once they got off the off the ark, they were probably, you know, yeah. there was probably people not being thankful and worshiping God. Okay, so let's think about this carefully. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> what did Abraham know was going to happen with worship? What did he take with him when he said that word that he, that he was going to worship, when he said that to his young men who were following him? He took him. the lad took his son mm -hmm. and he took wood mm -hmm. and and a knife and fire for what for the burnt offering ah so that involved a sacrifice so there's a connection in the first mention of of worship with sacrifice Okay, so we're to read this passage again. We're not going to do it on air because we've already read it in our study. But the question is, see if these three words in any way give you a picture of Christ, Jesus Christ and his work on our behalf. 
So you could compare this use of love with John 3.16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. Yay. Sunday school. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, so you can, uh, in your book, and while we're thinking about this, we should connect this up with the idea of love obey and worship that we've learned here in in um in genesis 22 so what is the first obvious thing abraham went on the mountain and he took his son his beloved son yeah and god sent G sent jesus christ to the earth as his beloved son to do what? Sacrifice himself. Yes. For our sin. Excellent. Did you did you get into uh okay? Day 17 so, yet? We just wait. We are in 17. No, we were in 16. Were we? Yeah. You said we were Oh yeah, yeah. So did you get into 17? No, not yet. Okay, well, let's just think about it because it's still in that passage and we'll think through the 17th day. So why was Abraham, so you, if you want to write in the answers in your book, you certainly may. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I never get around to that. I read it and then I, yeah, okay. and then I. So, uh, so let's go, let's go to it now. We're in the 17th day for everyone, which is on page. Sixty-three. Excellent. Okay, so uh, so uh, why was Abraham going to offer up his son? Um, to be obedient to the Lord, and as a, to be obedient to the Lord, basically. Yeah, because God said so. God told him to, and so he went. In what what land would he make the sacrifice? Uh oh. Um. So God told him it's near the beginning of the passage. Moriah. Yes. He, he's take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will tell you. And so he told him specifically that you're going to offer your son on this mountain, Moriah, <clears throat> as a burnt offering. Um. I don't think that Abraham maybe told Isaac <laughs> because Isaac asked, Hey, where's the, where's the lamb for the offering? So obviously Abraham did not tell his son what he was about to do. All right. So where in that land would the sacrifice be made? On a mountain that God would show him. Exactly. So why did Abraham name that place the Lord will provide, Jehovah Jireh? What was the circumstance? That was the day that, that was after the ram had been found in the, with his horns caught. Yes. Because what did God do? He, God provided that, right? Yes, exactly. And, and uh, when Isaac, previous to that, asked, well, where's the ram? And, and, uh, and Abraham said, the Lord will provide for himself a ram. Okay. Uh, here's another question. This is something to think about. It, um, what is the order of these three words? Which comes first? Which comes second? Love. Then? I'm trying to remember how many of them there were. Well, it was just love, worship, and obey. Okay, we so love came first, then worship, then obey. Exactly. So why, why is that order significant? <clears throat> Well, do we worship something that we don't love? No. Okay. 
but <clears throat> we also need to love the God we worship. And in order to do that, we must obey. Yeah, we show our love by obedience. Yes. So verse one of this, pa the first verse of this passage tells us why God told Abraham to offer up Isaac. What was the reason? As a sacrifice to show that he obeyed, that he loved God and was willing to obey. Um, read the first verse. Just give me a second. Yeah. Take up your only son, your only son. You know. No, no, before. I am. Just give me a second. Oh, he was testing Abraham. Yes. So God was testing Abraham. Remember when we were studying the name of God and, and it was El Elyon and uh, it was the story, uh, was the, the account of Job and it was the account of Satan coming in. Here comes, we're just having, Gislaine's coming in. Good morning, Gislaine. She's just connecting to audio. Oh, she was there and then she didn't connect audio. Good morning. Can't hear you yet tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's me. So she's not connected to audio. Can you hear us? No, yes. Jenner tablet? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so I, I'm going to um, continue on while she gets herself sorted. Um, uh, where were we? Oh, yes. Uh, so we were tight. We were. Um, we read and studied the account of Job and uh, what was God doing to Job? Testing him. Exactly. And he was using Satan who had to gain permission from uh, El Elyon to do this. But the Lord God recommended um recommended job to satan as someone who would love god with his whole heart and he was an upright man so what did abraham offer to god in isaac's place a ram yes and did that ram deserve to die probably not it was an innocent little animal. It was a little animal. But God provided it. Yes. So that Abraham did not have to do child mm -hmm. sacrifice. So that's a that's an important concept. God does not require child sacrifice, human sacrifice. And in this case, he provided for himself that ram. He put it in the thicket there. And Abraham, oh, there it is. There's the ram. So in, when we look at ourselves and um, who we are in this world, did we deserve to die because of our sins? Yes. Yes. The um, Bible tells us clearly there's no one righteous, not even one. Uh, n there's no one who loves or looks for God. Um, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. So what did God provide in our place? Jesus. Yes, Jesus. The lamb. Yes, Jesus, the Lamb of God. And we see that in um, the book of John where, um, where John the Baptist cries out, Behold, the Lamb of God. And so 
Who was Jesus to God? His son. Yes, his only son. Okay, so we have come through to the end of day uh, 16 and day 17. Uh, on Wednesday, I think we shall go through the 18th day and the 19th day. And we'll, uh, so you, if you pre-read that, what pages are we looking at, Adrian? Um, bottom of 65 and day 19 is in the middle of, well, sort of in the middle of 67. And the, uh, so we're going to go to the discussion questions for 65. Which is on page 69. Okay, so that's where we're going to go. So whoever's uh, just watching this by um, after the fact, that's what we're going to be studying. And the scriptures that we are, we're going to be still looking at that scripture. Um, and we're going to be relating to it in case you want, if you don't have your book and you're going to write this down. We are, the scriptures that are mentioned in our study are Romans 10, 13. Hold on, I need to write this down. Well, it's in your book. You don't have to look right Where it down. Is it? I'm just, it's on, uh, I, it's <coughs> on the 18th day. So I'm just stating this for the people on YouTube. Romans 10, 13, John 5, 21. So you can highlight those in your book. John 5, 21. Um, we're going to look at 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1. That's in the Old Testament. Second Chronicles 3, verse 1. We're going to look back again at Genesis 22, verse 14. And then we are going to tie it into Hebrews chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. That's Hebrews 10, 4 and 5. And uh, we are going to look at Hebrews 9, verses, verse 27. And John 3, 36. So that is in the 18th day. And the 19th day, we're going to be looking back again at Genesis 22, what we've just looked at. Some specific verses. And we're going to tie that into Matthew 6, verses 7 and 8. Matthew 6, verses 7 and 8. And then in that same chapter, verse 11. And then we're going to tie that into Romans 8, verse 32. And Philippians 4, verse 19. Philippians 4, verse 19. And the ending verse for this section is Isaiah in the Old Testament. Isaiah 31, verse 1. So that's what we're going to look at tomorrow. Or, uh, sorry, in two days on our calendar. Uh, that will be... Um, Wednesday and it we're in February. Happy February, everyone. It's February the first today. As I'm recording. How exciting. Anyway, uh, I just as a warning for everyone, my internet went down for um twelve hours yesterday from eight o'clock at night on Sunday night until uh it we reset at about eight thirty or nine. Anyway. I just want to say, do not mock people who say that maybe the internet uh, will be taken down and believers will not be able to access it for their Zoom sessions because the people who run those country companies, those big high, uh, tech companies, shut down the president of the United States. And if tech companies can shut down the president of the United States, they can certainly shut down us. So. With God's help and God's blessing and all hope in God, we will be here on Wednesday by Zoom. For those of you who are uh, with me live in the room or studying live with us, uh, I have your phone numbers, I hope. And I will, if, if all of that goes down uh, again ever, I will call you on the phone and let you know. Okay? But until then, let's pray. Ah, Lord God, our Jehovah Jireh, our provider, uh, we, we trust that you have provided even our uh, ability to access the internet so that we can study together in the absence of being able to meet together because of uh, government edict. 
And Father God, we do want to be obedient and uh, to you first and foremost. We want to show you our love by how we trust you in these circumstances, how we look to you for our salvation in Jesus Christ, and how we look to you for our sanctification in living out our life. We're thankful that you've given us the Holy Spirit that shows us the way in which we should walk at any time. And, and uh, if we just cry out to you, we can have all the wisdom that you have stored up in heaven and earth right at our right at our fingertips. So, Lord, uh, forgive us for not crying out to you for understanding or for crying out to you for wisdom. And... Uh, Lord God, we are so grateful for this ability to have this much freedom um, in this world. We know that in the world things have shut down before, that, uh, that the iron fist of tyrants have clamped down on your people, but yet you keep a remnant alive and burning in a flame so that your gospel goes forward in places that we could we can hardly even imagine. And um, so, Lord God, thank you so much for that. And thank you for the freedom that we have. Thank you that regardless that we can worship you with our heart and soul. And we want to do that wholeheartedly. So find in us the places in our hearts which are not completely devoted to you. Expose them to us so that we can repent of that waywardness and self-willedness and that, that our hearts may become totally obedient to you. Father God, I'm just asking you for your protection over the hearts and minds of my friends who are uh, with me in the room this morning and who may see this uh, out there in you YouTube land. Guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Give them a hunger for your word that will not be satisfied by any other means. Draw them to your word and to your side, Lord Jesus, until we meet again with your grace according to your plan and your will. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. We'll see you next time. Okay. Bye.